Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Inessa and I'm an author from Toronto, Canada and I publish under the pen name A.N. Sage. Um, every single week I try to put out a video about either the art of writing, about being a creative, some behind the scenes of what it takes to work basically full time as a creative for yourself um, and some planner videos here and there along the way. Um, if you, you are an author, an aspiring author or somebody who would like to to work creatively in today's kind of geography and figure out what that means, then make sure that you're subscribed and that you hit the bell notification so you don't miss another video. In today's video, I am actually talking about the more creative aspect of what it is that I do um, and offering some tips for anybody um, on the aspect of Art, being an artist um, or any kind of digital art. I want to talk to you about selling your digital art and some tips that I have for starting to sell your digital art um, or any kind of art that you do online. As somebody who is not only a designer for book covers, where for the most part I do a lot of digital painting, uh, photo composition, things like that, I work with a lot of fantasy authors and so it takes more of an illustrative approach when I design covers, though I do typography covers and other genres and romance and things like that as well. But for the most part my specialty is in fantasy and that really in the end of the day book covers in the fantasy realm tend to look more illustrated um, and so it becomes more of a, a digital art approach than it is just a graphic design approach. Um, I also have an Etsy shop where I sell some of my kawaii illustrations and my drawings um, which I think you can kind of see um, in this little area here. Um, I have a shop called Glitter Fritter and I sell stickers and planner surprise because I'm a planner junkie and other little cute little stationary items like different postcards and arm prints and vinyls and things like that um, of my art. So I do have two aspects of being an artist um, and being an author is a creative pursuit as well and you are an artist in a way but in today's video I strictly want to talk about how to get started um, and what you should look for and figure out if you're going to be selling your digital art or your art online. Now I do have a kind of evergreen webinar um, that is up for another couple of months um, on my academy website. I will link that in the description. I also have a course on designing book covers for fantasy for anybody who's interested in that. There's currently a sale until the end of July on that course um, and it is really really comprehensive so the webinar is free you can sign up for that and it kind of teaches you um, how to sell digital art online step by step in a lot more detail than what we'll cover in this video today um, and the course is probably one of the most comprehensive courses that I could make and that I've seen out there for book cover designing. There's not that many courses out there. Um, this course pretty much covers everything you need to know on fantasy book cover design, including even a sub course that's included in this course on how to paint fantasy hair, which is like a big deal for if you've seen fantasy book covers, there's always that fantasy hair involved. So um, if you're interested in any of that, make sure you click, go to the Academy website, check it out, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But today we're talking about tips for starting to sell your digital art or any kind of art that you really do. Visual art, I guess we should say. My first and probably the most important tip that I could give you is you need to find your niche. Uh, your niche is going to be what separates you from other people even though um, you might be doing similar work to other people there's styles there's trends in art um, just like there's trends in writing and books and different types of tropes there are trends in art as well and so um, a lot of stuff does tend to follow one another as art usually works but you want to find your niche when i was looking to start my book covers i knew my niche was going to be fantasy. I write fantasy, I read fantasy, I love fantasy, um, and I love drawing. And so I really wanted to add that element of illustration to a cover, which I could do a lot easier with fantasy. And so I concentrated on fantasy design. Now, when it came to opening an Etsy shop, 
slightly different, right? Um, I definitely wanted to do stickers. I've owned a planner shop before. It did very, very well. Um, I love stickers. <laughs> I love stationery. But what I also really like is witchy stuff. And not only do I like witchy stuff, I also really like kawaii and I like cutesy stuff, two very contradictory things. Um, and so my niche for the Etsy shop was almost obvious to me. I had to have like a pastel goth aesthetic. So what I mean by that is I have like things like this, which I'll put right here. Uh, but it's, uh, it's witchy, but it's also cute and it's got those like pastel y colors to it. Um, so almost like a pastel, cute Halloween aesthetic. Um, and so that's my niche. And my niche was going to be stickers, but I didn't want to do just decorative stickers. You'll see um, a lot of artists tend to do more um, vinyls, um, prints, and then stickers that are more decorative stickers. I'm a planner girl at heart. And so I kind of wanted to have the type of sticker that you can use as a deco sticker, but is also functional. And so if you look on my shop, um, and I'll link it so you can just kind of peruse and check it out and see how I did everything. Uh, but if you look on my shop, you'll see that my sticker sheets are actually very, um, they're set to be productive stickers and not so much decorative. There's a couple of decorative elements in them and you can use them for decoration. But for the most part, I wanted my stickers to have a purpose in your planner. So if you are going to be doing a lot of reading, then there's a reading sticker for that. So more like a other, not decorative planning. So the opposite of decorative planning. Uh, but the vinyls are for fun. <laughs> so those are definitely for fun. I had to add those in there. But so my niche was going to be pastel goss um, and stickers that are not just for decoration. So that's my niche for the shop. Finding your niche is very, very important because it will help you develop a voice. And then after you find your niche, you're going to try to figure out kind of your platform. So where are you going to sell this? I wanted to do this early on. There's different steps you can take and you can take these steps and steps in different ways. You don't have to follow this exact um, formula that I'm giving out right now because it's not a formula. They're just tips. But figure out what platform you want to sell it on. When you're first starting out, a lot of people will say, like, go to a platform like Etsy, for example, because there's already traffic there. And while that's true for certain things, like it's definitely true for planner stickers, because that's a lot of times when people go and look for planner stickers, they usually go to Etsy first. But that's not necessarily true if you're just going to be selling art prints, right? Um, your platform might really be to sell, could be custom designs on Instagram, right? Um, or you could start a Shopify site or you could start a Squarespace site and promote it yourself um, because you're already on like ArtStation or something like that. So you want to think about the platform that you're going to be selling your art on. And when you choose your platform, make sure you take a look at their terms of services, what percentages they take, how their advertising works. For example, if you're going to be going with Etsy, there's different ways to work their Etsy ads. They are no longer what they used to be years ago. Um, there's very little you control now. And so there's ways that you can work them. Um, however, if you're counting on Etsy for the advertising part, I would not recommend going on Etsy at all. I would recommend building your own site and advertising on say Instagram or Facebook or going on TikTok and doing a bunch of those. So um, to find your platform, the next step that I have is do your market research. Um, before I started anything, before I started my cover design, for example, which the chosen platform for me for cover design was Facebook. Um, that's where I started. That's where I got my cover design business to the point where I was doing it full time. Um, and that's kind of where my clientele lives. And to this day, I still consider Facebook to be my number one driver of sales. Uh, word of mouth is now kind of how I function in cover design uh, because I work with authors and they bring on other authors. Um, they recommend me and so on, so on and forth, so forth. But every time I drop a pre-made on Facebook, rest assured, I will probably book a few clients after that because that platform advertises the best for me. Um, so I did my market research to figure out that I want to be on Facebook. I found out where people that I want buying my products were um, for cover design. For example, I realized very quickly that most of the authors that I should be working with or would want to work with, they hang out on Facebook. They're either on Facebook or they're on TikTok. 
Uh, TikTok was a newer commitment. So TikTok wasn't really a thing back when they started <laughs> doing cover design. Um, it became a thing now. And so I'm slowly transferring and going on TikTok more and more because that's where the authors are now with book talk exploding. But back then, Facebook was the key. And so I did my master's research and I found out that, I, yes, I want to be on Facebook to start. Um, and that helped me kind of start my platform because originally my platform was very much a Facebook group that grew very, very fast. And so I had to start a website. <laughs> so see how like one will lead to another. You kind of have to figure out where your ideal client lives and go there. Um, and from there, you will find your platform. Um, and all that starts with finding a niche. So now we've got the niche. We got a platform and we've done our market research and we know kind of where we want to go and where we want to take our art. Um, your plat your market research will also help you figure out um, where you want to go with your art, what kind of products you want to offer. Like um, in the example of my Etsy shop, I knew that I wanted to do stickers, I wanted to do postcards, and I wanted to do vinyls to start. And now also have bookmarks and greeting cards. Uh, but my market research told me that start with stickers um, and maybe postcards or prints, right? Which takes me to my next point. You want to be selling what you know. Um, you want to work with your kind of um, abilities <laughs> and what it is that you are good at and don't work against yourself. Um, don't try to mimic what other people are doing. If you're not good at promoting yourself on social media, don't do it. Find another way that you are comfortable with. Um, I am not great. So again, I mentioned TikTok. I'm not great on TikTok. Um, it gives me highs. <laughs> I, I do try to be on there, but it's very difficult for me. Um, I have more fun doing things like this <laughs> where I can almost chat with people um, for longer periods of time. And as though we are friends, um, I like posting and then commenting on things like that is my uh, where I live best. Um, so for promotion, I go with what I know for work, for my artwork. Um, I know that I am not a, like a straightforward illustrator. I am not one of those absolutely amazing artists out there that can literally like sit down and draw something and it will look like a photograph. That is not me. Um, that's not the kind of art I gravitate towards. I like cutesy things. I like exaggerating things. I like, you know, the Adams family kind of things. Um, and that's kind of where I live as both an artist and an author, really. I write a lot of kind of spooky, paranormal, mystery type of books books, right? Um, so that's kind of what I know. Um, now, I, when I was building my businesses, I didn't start like for cover design. I wasn't like, hey, I'm going to do like contemporary uh, romance because it's popular and lots of people write in that. Um, so I'm going to offer that as a design. No, I, I didn't want to do that. Um, I made the personal choice that I'm going to design something that I'm passionate about to start and then I can expand into other areas. So Sell what you know, work with what you know, because it's going to be easier for you to market yourself that way. And it's going to be easier for you to stay passionate about what you're doing because you really need to stay passionate um, in order to sell your digital art. You also want to then decide if you're going to do digital or versus physical products. Um, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of artists that sell digital only. So they'll draw digital art and you'll get a digital product um, and then they'll give you licenses and rights and whatever. Um, there's people who draw and sell uh, clip art, right? So that's a digital product. Or do you want to do physical products? Um, I guess my my cover design, that's a digital product. My Etsy shop, that's a physical product. I mail stuff out. Um, if you're going to be doing physical, um, are you ready to drop stuff off at the post office, to deal with post office, to deal with shipping and tracking and all of that? Because these are all things that kind of come with doing a physical product. Um, so you want to really, really think about whether or not you're going fully digital or if you're doing physical or if you're doing a combination of both, because that's a possibility too. And you need to think about this because that could actually decide what platform you're on. There are certain platforms that might work better for digital products, certain platforms that work better for physical products. Um, if you're doing your own um, website, for example, if you're using Squarespace, Squarespace shipping is questionable still. Um, it's not as easy 
to work with at say like shipping through Shopify or Etsy where you can just get shipping labels and ship on out, you know, and you get better rates that way. Um, if you're with Squarespace and you live outside of the States, um, you might have to deal with different ways to set up your shipping on that side. So just think about that kind of stuff. And then you want to also figure out if you want to do custom work or not. <laughs> um, now, if you are an illustrator, if you illustrate, you don't necessarily um, have to do custom work. You don't have to do custom characters for people. You could just have your art and you could make art books. You can make art prints. You can make stickers. Um, you can make magnets, bookmarks, whatever. Um, and none of them have to be custom. I know a lot of artists um, who don't take on custom work, but your business plan could be strictly custom. <laughs> you could do stuff for yourself, but you could also have a strictly custom approach to your business. Sorry, I just have to let somebody in to my house. So custom or not is something you really need to think about as well. Both are very valid, but both are very different approaches to selling digital art online. Your next thing that you want to do is think about your pricing. So how are you going to be pricing your artwork? Um, are you going, if you have stickers, look at your market research that you did. What is the average sticker sheet or the average vinyl selling for? How are people packaging it? Now they're charging more depending on how they package it. Um, are you going to have different um, sizes that you're offering in your art prints, for example? How, what's your pricing going to look like? You want to jot all this down and get kind of the nitty gritty of it out of the way before you go live and before you start setting up your online shop, if you have one, or before you start advertising yourself on social media. And then the final thing, and it's almost like a bonus thing, because I find like people don't necessarily always think about it, but licensing. <laughs> it's very important, especially with AI out there. And I'm going to leave my opinions on AI to myself out of this, because this is not the video about that, uh, which I can make a video about that. If you're interested, just make sure you leave a comment below and let me know if you want to hear what I have to say and what my perspective is on the whole thing. But licensing is very, very important for an artist. You want to make sure that your licensing and your terms and conditions are clear, no matter how you're selling it. Um, in all of my listings on Etsy, for example, and you would think that Etsy licensing um, all of my listings include that the artwork belongs to me, that the copyright belongs to me, and that nobody can use it outside of personal use. You want to have that somewhere on there. If you are offering commercial licensing, you want to make it very, very clear what your customer will get with commercial licensing. For example, if you are taking custom illustrations, you could have a custom illustration that you give to, say, an author for their character, but they would need to buy a commercial licensing on top of that if they want to use it for marketing. Um, so if they want to share it with their readers, they wouldn't want to put it on postcards and bookmarks and sell it somewhere, they need to pay for a commercial license. And you want to finalize the pricing on your commercial licenses and what that would entail. Now, it might mean that you might have to go to somebody who knows a little bit more about the law um, and pay them to write all this out for you. It could mean that you do a ton of research online and put something together yourself. But I would encourage you to always, always think about licensing and have something ready because you want to protect your work. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there that's happening right now that makes it harder for artists to keep copyrights of their work and to make it clear who has the copyright to their work. So make sure you're not caught in some kind of drama <laughs> that's legal with copyrights. Um, get licensing ready and make it very straightforward with everything you do, what it entails. For my cover design business, I use stock photos. Um, as basis for composition. And so my licensing depends on the licensing of the stock folder sites. And I make that very clear in both my dis custom design contract, or if you buy it pre-made, there's terms and conditions on my website, in my Facebook group, everywhere that tells you exactly what you can do with your cover and who owns the copyright, which is usually me. Um, so that's pretty much like the main uh, gist of it. Like I said, there's a full one hour long webinar that I have that's very, very detailed that walks you step by step of what you'll need um, to cover the basis to start selling your digital art online. And that's on the Cauldron Press Academy. So check that out. Enrollment is free um, and that's going to be up for a little while. I might be taking it off at some point um, as I kind of rejig how the academy looks in the future. So if you are interested in seeing it um, and kind of enrolling, then make sure you do that soon. 
Um, and that's about it. That's all I have for selling creative, <laughs> being creative and selling your art online. Uh, if you have any questions at all, make sure you leave them in the comments. Um, I love hearing from you guys. Uh, as always, if you're subscribed, thank you so, so much. Um, I think as I'm making this, we're like one person away from having 2000 subscribers on this channel, which might not seem like a lot to some people, but to me, just having almost 2000 people who want to hear what I have to say and, um, are interested in the tips that I have to offer is absolutely amazing. And I'm so humbled and grateful for everybody who's part of our community here. Um, just love you guys so much. And it honestly makes me so happy to make these videos for you guys. Like I like glow when I know that there's like a video I have to put up. So with that said, I hope you guys are enjoying your summer. I hope you stay magical and to all my creatives and writers out there, uh, stay positive, Keep at it and I hope you stay magical and see you next week for another video. Bye.